Hi there, and welcome to today's video for Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers. Today is one year since I started making these YouTube how-to videos. Since then, I've grown my channel from a very small channel to the channel that it is today. Um, looking at YouTube shorts and also looking at making these Photoshop and Photo P tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to make a multiply diver directional rotating sunrise. So you can see on the animation behind you, I've got one part of the sunrise moving one way around and the other part of the sunrise moves in the other way around to create this sort of multi-directional um, piece of animation. Um, one of my students at GCSE Photography is doing something similar, so to try and explain to him how I'm going to do it, I decided I'd make a video to show exactly the process needed to get one going one way and one going the other way. I'm just going to pause it quickly and just talk you through. So the first slide, you can see they're both the same direction. The next slide, one's gone one way, one's gone the other way, and exactly the same. So counterclockwise and clockwise, which creates this really cool effect. It's based on Victoria Seema and her sunset photography and also Rio Owada and his sort of tessellations and also Fong Q Wei and the way he has these different tonal variations. So all those videos are in my Photoshop playlist so you can have a look at those and see how to do them. And today I'll talk you through the steps. So the first thing we need to do is I'll show there many layers to this video. You will need, and I will just start a new one so you can see what we do from scratch so we're going to go to open you will need a sunset photograph so here is a sunset photograph and there you see we've got a blank timeline i will actually close the timeline to begin with because the timeline will just get confusing and in the way and i'll go view and fit on screen so there is my sunset that i took the other morning in hastings on the beach on the seafront there's a seagull flying towards the sun i thought it'd make a lovely image now we need a shape to add to it. There are many ways of creating shapes. You could use the shape tool and design shapes. Or for this one, I'm going to use one that I made earlier for one of my YouTube shorts. So I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go Place Embedded, and I'm going to find my image and click Place. And this is something I've become fascinated with, which is squaring the circle. It's where you have a square and circle with the same perimeter size, and they overlap. You can have a look at the YouTube short section in my channel. I'll have a look at how to do that later. Now, what I need to do is just get the outline of the shape. So I use the magic wand tool, click on the outside of the shape, and you can see this flashing line. I then go to select and inverse, and you can see that I've got this part of the image flashing here. So I then hide that layer, create a new layer. I'm going to use the bucket fill today just to make the layer obvious which layer it is, and I fill that section in black, okay? You'll notice that it did the outside areas, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Once I've done that, I'm gonna press select, deselect to stop it flashing, and I'm gonna scale it so that it is as big as I need it. Like so, I believe that's about the right size, make sure it's in the right place. And then click enter there it is that's where i'm going to cut the shapes from my background with you may have seen me do this before so i'm going to use the magic wand to click onto the inside of the shape hide the layer with the shape on click on the background and i can either press Control c Control v Control j or i can go edit copy edit paste which is always fun now you'll see there is my cutout section to make it show up against the background, I'm going to make the background slightly darker. So I'm going to click on the background layer. I'm going to go to where it says Image Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and I'm just going to bring the brightness down slightly. So you can see that it shows up. This is very similar to the Fong Q Wei tutorial that I did a while ago. Now that I've got this area cut out, I can start to work out where I want to do the animation. And to make it really easy, I'm going to use the cutout tool again. I'm going to scale it down. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Scale. And I'm going to type in 80%, I believe. There we go. Let's enter. Then 
I will use the magic wand tool again on the layer with the shape on it. Click on the shape, hide that layer, go to the cutout layer here where it says layer two and press edit cut. And I've now cut out a circular shape, which will be what makes the first part of the animation. So this shape you can see here on the animation, if I get the timeline back up, is this shape here. So you can see how it rotates. So this becomes the outer one that goes around here. And there'll be another shape on the inner one that goes around the other way. So I'll do one at a time so you get an idea of how it works. If I go back to the one we're working on now. What we need to do now is duplicate this layer. So there are eight layers of it. So we're going to turn it at 45 degrees each layer. So in order to do that, we right click and click on duplicate layer and we'll repeat this so that there are eight of them. So duplicate layer, duplicate layer, duplicate layer, duplicate layer, and then duplicate layer. And you will see it says layer two copy seven and then there is obviously layer two and layer two copy so we may have actually done one too many let's count them one two three four five six seven eight so that's perfect now all you need to do now is close all the eyes next to all the layers apart from layer two copy and then we are going to go edit we are going to go to make sure we have selected the layer. We're going to go edit, transform, and we're going to go to rotate. And then up here, we're going to simply type in 45 degrees. Press enter. That is now done. We go to layer two, copy two, and we make sure the eye is showing. And we go edit, transform, rotate, and this time 90 degrees. We repeat this for each layer. So we now go edit, transform, rotate, and this time it's 90 plus 45, which is 135. There's a bit of maths for you. And then we go to the next one. And this time we want to go to 180. So we go edit, transform, rotate and type in 180. Then this is where it gets a little bit confusing. On the next one, we can't type in 225 because it won't let us. So instead we're going to write minus 135. Let's enter. Then on the next one, we're going to go to edit, transform, rotate, and we are going to go to minus 90. And the last but not least one, we are going to do edit, transform, rotate. And this one is minus 45. There we go. So now we have got all the shapes we need to create our animation for the first part of it. So I will talk you through what happens here. So we go back to... Uh, I will just hide the timeline so on your screen you will have eight layers called copy etc you will have no timeline so you go to window and you go to timeline you can open the timeline you click onto this arrow here you might have it saying create video timeline if it does click on create frame animation then you click on this part where it says create frame animation and it will give you the first frame now from here, you click on these three lines here and you click make frames from layers and it will automatically put all the frames in the right order along your timeline, including even the templates that you don't need. So you click on those and click on the bin icon and click on that one and click on the bin icon and click yes. Now, you'll see there are now nine frames. We don't need nine frames. We would like to have 
eight frames. But this frame here is like the master frame. Anything I do to this frame, if you watch, if I hide the, uh, the background and I then reopen it, the background will appear on all of the slides. And if I take the background away, it will take it away from all the slides. If I open one of the other layers, it will add it to all the other slides. So this is like controls all of them. If I take it away, it will take it away. I need it back on that one. So what I suggest you do is once you've got all the frames where you want them, then delete the master frame, which then makes frame one the master frame. And then when you play, you should get your animation. And you can see there, that is the first half of what we are doing. Okay, so that's relatively straightforward. Once we've done that and we're happy, we will go to Save As, save it on our computer, and we can call it, I'll call it something like 5, and click OK. Now, we might want to add this as a GIF to a presentation that we're doing, so we will go to Export, and we will save for Web Legacy. We might have to wait for a moment for it to save. As you can see here, when this screen appears, everything is set as the default that we need. It's optimized, or it will be optimized in a moment. It always takes a little while. Animations are quite memory hungry, so they do take a little while to process. And we'll just wait for it to do that. And if you want to have a little preview of it, you can zoom out. And you can see how it looks like so. And then we click Save. Now, the important thing on this screen is to make sure this is set to HDMI and Images. And the Images folder is where the animation will go. So we click Save. And it will then save it, which we can then use. And I'll show you the next part as well in a moment. But it's definitely taking a while to save today. So while it is saving, I will just open a blank slideshow to show you how we're going to import it. And Google Slides, as you know, is a very useful tool. It looks like it has saved, so we will go here Go to this tool, Upload from Computer. Always a good idea to remember where you save stuff, which, to be honest, right now I have forgotten. So, did I save it? So, I'm going to save it again and actually remember where I'm saving it. This is always a top tip when you're, saving, when you're exporting work. So, export, save for web legacy. Wait for it to load again, which is going to be fun. And wait for a bit. You might want to skip the video forward. So click Save. And the important thing here is right. Choose where you are saving it. So we are going to save it into animations folder. So we're going to save it into this PC and we're going to stick it in a pictures folder. And we're going to stick it in our photo so we know exactly where it is. So like that and click save. So then over here, we're going to go upload from computer. Look in pictures, look for images, wait for it to actually save. See the little flashy round circle? It's still not saved. So we go to our slideshow, we click upload from computer, and then we go into pictures images and there it is and if it doesn't work that will be hilarious won't it
here it comes into our presentation and there's our animated gif which looks absolutely fantastic so you can see it just revolves around 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 there you go sorry for the delays on that one so going back to our tutorial if you want to make an extra layer going the other direction what you will need to do is copy and paste another part of the image you can see on this one i've taken the middle chunk out and then animate that going in the opposite direction so you can see here it's running in the opposite direction so on each of these layers this is what i'm going to show you i've got the eye open for the outside ring and i've also got the eye open for the inside ring and so that you see it as a ring i've also got a layer with the eye open which has got just this part of the background in which is lighter than that to create that design so for layer one you can see that i have selected the base layer for each one for layer two i have then used the second layer up so it says layer free copy and this one you can see i've rotated in the opposite direction to this one on layer three you can see i've done the same thing and that creates this really exciting effect Okay, have fun making your own animations like this. I'd like to see them, and if you want to post them in the section, comment sections, feel free. And if not, good luck with making your own animations. Okay, thanks for watching today, and I hope you've enjoyed this how-to video. Okay, and goodbye. Oh, don't forget, obviously, one last thing. Hit that very important button there. Thank you very much and goodbye.